Good evening. Deontay, God bless you. Marcy, God bless you. Angela, God bless you. Good evening. Thank you for joining with me this evening. Amen. Truly, God is worthy to be praised. He's worthy. Good evening. Good evening. Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor Shaw. God bless you, my brother. Good to see you. Christina, good to see you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Natasha, God bless you. 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 Amen. It's good to see you. Please tell my brother that I'll give him a call back after Bible study tonight. God's willing. Amen. Wanda, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hallelujah. Listen, if you have the opportunity, please share this on your page so that others will know that we're on. Um, who might be connected to you, but may not be connected to me. And so thank you for joining with me tonight. Amen. Sharnice, God bless you. Amen. <clears throat> it's good to see you all. We're going to wait about, uh, about 30 seconds and then we're going to begin. God bless you, Raymond. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good evening, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Good evening, Wendy. God bless you. Hallelujah. All right. Okay. Amen. So let's begin in prayer. Thank you for joining with me this evening. Thank you for taking time out of your Friday to spend a few moments with me. So grateful to have you all tonight. Grateful for this opportunity and privilege that I have to share with you. Amen. And so <clears throat> we're going to begin in prayer uh, so that we can begin tonight's study. Um, prayerfully, I won't be with you too long this evening. Um, I know you guys, it's Friday. You guys probably have other things to do as well. And also to get rest. For those of you who work in the traditional work week, you know, um, we want to hit the word of God and, and, and quit it. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. So let's begin in prayer. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to study your word. And we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done in our lives and for what you're doing even now. Father, I pray that you would enrich our lives and that you would strengthen us with wisdom and knowledge tonight, Lord God, and that you would grant each and every one of us the understanding. Father, for truly your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And so we thank you, dear God, for your grace and your mercy. And we thank you for your spirit. So Holy Spirit of the living God, we pray that you would grant unto me free flow that I might speak your word with power and authority. Forgive us of all sin, cleanse us from all unrighteousness and anything that would hinder us from hearing your voice. Remove it from us, God, even now in the name of Jesus and bless our time together that it might be fruitful, that it might be for the upbuilding of your kingdom and that your name might be glorified. So have your way tonight and guide us, we pray. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. All right. So <clears throat> tonight is part three. Part three of somebody has to wash the dishes, you know. Um, the, the phrase, somebody has to wash the dishes or washing the dishes is a proverbial phrase that is meant um, regarding, you know, most of us don't really want to wash dishes, right? We really don't. You know, we make a mess. We don't want to clean up the mess, right? 
And so, you know, there are things relative to our lives, things that we would rather they just be forgotten about. There's some situations of lives that we would just, you know what, that was back then. That was a part of the old me. That was my old relationship or whatever the case may be. And you want all that junk that is associated with that former whatever. You want that stuff to stay there. But so often what is the case is that even once we pass certain situations, right? Those things of the past sometimes has an effect on our present life. And so the, the phrase, somebody has to wash the dishes, is relative to the stuff that we don't want to deal with, the stuff that we are just hoping we can forget, the hurts, the pains, the disappointments, the infidelity, the um, maybe abuse or, or, or molestation or whatever, rape, whatever it is, right? Verbal abuse, emotional abuse, relational abuse, whatever, right? Um, with some of those things we would hope would just be left there. And let's be honest, you know, when we step into the new, we are actually hoping that the new would get rid of all of what we felt, would get rid of. Sort of reminds me, and thank you, Holy Spirit, because um, I hear this in my spirit right now. This wasn't in my notes. So, so I need to find this quickly because I heard the Holy Spirit just say something that is fresh off the, uh, the kitchen. Okay. Um, hold on. Let me pull this up. Because this is, this is something. This is something here. Hold on one second. Let me just pull this up. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Is in... Genesis, I believe it's Genesis. Yeah, Genesis 41. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Isn't it wonderful when the Holy Spirit can lead you and give you things that you didn't otherwise knew? Okay. Um, Genesis chapter 41. And remember, we talked about this last night. We talked about the ever abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. So Genesis chapter 41. And when you get into Genesis 41, I want you to, um, let's look at verses, verse 51, no, 50, 51 and 52. So Genesis chapter 41, verses 51 and 52. This is Joseph. Remember, Joseph was sold into slavery. He was hated by his brothers. He, he was envied by his parents. He was sold into slavery. He, he went into Potiphar's house. Um, Potiphar's wife wanted to d jump on him. And when he pushed her to the side and told her, nah, chick, we can't have none of that. You belong to somebody else. Um, she cried rape. He was thrown in prison. Um, when he got to prison, he helped uh, uh, the two men that was in prison, gave them uh, the interpretation of their dreams. And, and then they forgot about him in prison. And he was there for another three years. But then finally, Pharaoh has a dream. It was told that he knows how to interpret dreams. He was brought out. Pharaoh, he gave Pharaoh the interpretation of the dream. Pharaoh now blesses him with his promotion, gets him out of prison and makes him the second in command of all the land, right? And look what happens. Look what happens, right? After all the things that he'd been through and after all the challenges of his life, um, him being in prison, and, and now he came out of prison and he has a promotion. So this is the new, right? He, my God, help me, Holy Spirit. This is the new, right? He, he, he's being promoted. But look what happens. He has two children. Verses 51 and 52. Look what happens. He says, Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. He says, for God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second one he called Ephraim. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Now, think about this, right? 
the first child, Manasseh, that he had, he named him Manasseh saying, God has made me forget all of my toil and all of my father's house, right? Now, God has made me forget. God has made me forget, right? And then the second child, he says, God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Wait a minute. You may have just missed that. You may have just missed that. Here he was. He had one son thinking that this son is going to make me forget about all my troubles. And now when the second son is born, he recognizes that I am fruitful, but he still acknowledges this is the land of affliction. This is the land of my pain. It sort of reminds me of when people have not been healed. You have not been healed properly. I'm not talking about in the brain. I'm talking about in the heart. You have not been healed from the former stuff. You haven't been healed from the the former relationships. You haven't been healed by the former things. So you expect that person to now fulfill all of your desires. You expect that person to now do opposite of everybody else, right? And what happens is that when you expect them to now be your all in all, the Bible says you dare not trust the arm of flesh for it will fail you. You dare not trust your own. So today, as a, or rather tonight, as a subtopic to somebody has to wash the dishes part three, as a subtopic, I want to talk to you today about the dangers of an empty vessel, the dangers of an empty vessel, an empty vessel, the dangers of an empty vessel, right? You know, it's, it's, it's funny to think about, you know, for me, it's funny to think about that when you have a a jar or something like that, right? And you fill the jar all the way to the top with water, right? What it does, it actually pushes out. The more water you put in there, it pushes out the air. And if you run water in there, any dust or dirt or anything that's in there, it it flushes it out if you keep running it in there, right? And so, but but the problem is, is that for many of us, and thank you, Angela, for putting that down, um, the, the problem for many of us is that when we leave One thing we oftentimes leave, we oftentimes leave there empty. We leave there empty. In other words, we leave there, whether it be in our minds that I want to get far, far away from this, this situation. And what happens is that if we're not careful, we will not learn anything from where we've been. We will not learn anything. Oftentimes, the stuff that people learn is that they just learn what they don't want. They just learn what I don't want to have. And so, for example, you know, if your your hurt was in a, a prior relationship and maybe that person was unfaithful or maybe that person didn't care for you, that person did not spend time with you. And so now when you get the next person, you, you really... Uh, press upon them and push upon them to, to, to be attentive to your needs, right? Now, let me share this with you because this is important to understand. Um, ladies and gentlemen, right? Let's say, for example, now this is more um, psychological, but it's true nonetheless, right? For example, when a woman, let's say a woman likes a particular type of guy, you like this type of person, you, you, this is the type of person you want, right? And then let's say if you get that person and that person now breaks your heart, that person now angers you and causes you to experience a little bit of anger or bitterness, then what happens is that you are naturally drawn to the opposite, right? (laughs) The problem with being drawn to the opposite is that sooner or later you come to your senses and sometimes we'll find out later on you never really liked that in the first place. It is important to know that 
when we go through situations, particularly when we go through hurtful situations, when we go through pains of the heart, we have to be careful of what's going on inside our vessel. What's going on inside of my heart? What's going on inside of my mind? As I shared with you last night, the Holy Spirit will raise a flag in those areas. He will allow those areas to come to the surface. Why? Because he doesn't want you to, to allow those things to swallow your pain. He doesn't want you to, to, to sit back in the background and allow that stuff to gain root in your soul and in your spirit because then it affects how you interact with people. It affects what you choose. It affects how you perceive. It, it, it affects you know, how you receive things, how you act and how you react to things, right? And so you have to be careful of the dangers of an empty vessel. Why? Because we know spiritually when your vessel is empty, then uh, demons now preoccupy you. Demons preoccupy you. It is important to know that when your vessel is empty, when you haven't learned nothing, when you haven't, you know, all you learn is what you don't want. And I know I don't trust this kind. And I know I don't like this. And I don't like nobody talking to me that way. And I don't like that. Well, listen, that is limited information. What you need to really understand is how you got to where you got how you came to that place, you know, what effects have that stuff, has that stuff had on you? What effects has it um, impressed upon you, impressed upon your personality and impressed upon, you know, sometimes you could have a woman or a man for that matter, who, you know, you've been doing it on your own for a minute. You've been handling your handle by yourself, right? You've been handling your handle by yourself. And now when you meet somebody else, you meet somebody who really acknowledges and accepts your um, independence, right? But then later on, when you get married, guess what? It becomes a problem because now you are a person who makes decisions on your own. You don't work, make decisions with the person. So that's why you have to be careful of an empty vessel because the enemy of souls love to find um, uh, the place uh, within your heart empty. I'm sorry. He, he loves to find people empty. He loves to find people who do not have uh, um, the, the, the wherewithal or the Holy Spirit dwelling in you richly. He doesn't, you know, you, you just have this surface Christianity. You still are, are dating insecurities. You're still dating uh, um, anger. You're still dating um, jealousy and envy and and, and weaknesses. You're still dating the baby stuff. I want you to turn with me to, to Matthew chapter 12, and we're going to, we're going to get right into this stuff and, and really share with it because the dangers of having an empty vessel, um, in, in, um, Matthew chapter 12. And when you get there, I want you to look at from verse 43 to 45. Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 to 45. Look at what it says. It says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it's empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven on the spirits more wicked than himself and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man or that person, that woman, is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. In other words, right, when we go through circumstances and situations, right, when we go through trials and difficulties, right, we have to be careful of, of what is our position concerning those things and, and what effects have those things had on me? What effect, 
You know, because, yeah, I know you're strong. Yes, I know you are a phenomenal woman and you are a, a, a strong man. Yeah, I know that stuff. But I, I want you to know that everything you go through has an effect on you. It has an effect on your personality. It has an effect on your outlook in life. It has an effect on your faith. It has an effect on the way you feel and the way you perceive things, right? And so you need to understand. You don't just you know, break off a relationship and then now you're searching for a new relationship that's not like those because keep in mind, right? Let me, let me say this and this, this might, this might get me into some trouble, but let me say this for those of us who have been divorced or those of us who have been separated, think about this. Yeah. Maybe truth be told, you don't want me to say anything positive about that person, but let me say this to you. Guess what? Regardless of how wicked they were, regardless of how deceptive they were, regardless of how uh, cruel they were, regardless of all the mess that they put you through, think about this. There was something about them that caused you to choose them. There was something that drew you to them. There was something. you were, And even if you say, well, pastor, um, he or she deceived me. They tricked me. No, 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 no. Think about this. The Bible says every man in James chapter one, every person is tempted when they are drawn away and enticed of their own desire. So there's something even in their trickery, even in their deception, there is something that they did that you like and you need to understand that. You need to understand what those things are before you enter into another relationship. Why? Because those things are predications to you deciding, you choosing. Those things are things that causes to develop your subconscious and your, your psyche. It causes you to deal with your, your, your pool of resources where how you perceive things. It's, it's, it's very important. Too many of us, when we go through heartache and heartbreak, we're going to, we're looking now for something that's totally opposite of the last thing. But guess what? You don't know this new thing. You understand the opposite. You understand what you formerly had, right? And so, so it's important to know, and Natasha, Angela just put it down. Um, you know, um, it, it's important to know that just because you've been hurt by the type of guy or girl that you like doesn't mean you should not choose that, that type of person. M remind you, every relationship is built upon two people making a daily decision. That means I could marry the perfect girl tonight. I can marry the perfect girl tonight. But if her heart is not sold out for Christ, and if my heart is not sold out for Christ, we could have a beautiful wedding. We could have a beautiful reception. We could have beautiful everything. We can make beautiful babies, beautiful love together. We can do all that, right? And guess what? Five, six, seven, ten years from now, that person can decide or you can decide, I don't love you anymore. I want somebody different. So guess what? It's not about finding the perfect one. It is about um, understanding who you are. The Bible says, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers, right? And, but that also has implications as it relates to um, the level of who you are, you know? And, and honestly, when I counsel people, I talk to you about some situations that maybe you don't want to talk about. Like, for example, what are your rules and your position between uh, uh, raising children? A lot of people don't talk about that. Do you believe in spanking children? Do you believe in talking children, timeouts? Do you believe in just taking stuff away from them? You know, what, what are your methods that you use for raising children, right? If you say no, does no really mean no? Or are you saying no and then keep on feeling sorry for them and do it for them anyway and tell them this is your last chance? Also, what, what you need to talk about is what are you doing financially? How do you handle money? Are you a saver? Don't say that we're savers because we're saving for the wedding or we're saving for a house. No. Are you normally a saver? 
Or are you a spender? Are you impulsive with your spending? How much money do you spend on makeup? How much money, fellas, do you spend on gadgets and sports? How much money do you spend on the things that you enjoy? All of these things are things that you need to understand. And sometimes when we've gone through hurt and heartache, it has caused us to be a certain type of individual that is really uncomfortable for us. And this is why many of us in our singleness, we're unhappy. We're unhappy because we don't even know who we are. We don't even know what we're called to do. We don't know what is God planned for our lives, but if we're wrapping our plans up in connecting with somebody else because we see what they have. But guess what? What they have came at a cost. What my God, help me, Holy Spirit. What they have came at a price. You know, when I look at my life and I look at, you know, the devotion and the dedication that God has given unto me, right? That that here I am on a um, Monday evening, which Mondays are my days off as a pastor, but the Lord has me teaching people on Monday. Then on Tuesday, I'm going to Bible study. And then on Wednesday, sometimes I'm having Bible study and sometimes I'm resting. But then on Thursday, I come back with Bible study. On Friday, here it is, Friday, the end of the week where we should be chilling and going out and having a good time. Here I am sitting in my house having Bible study, right? And sometimes I'll have it on Saturday and then some all the time on Sunday. And so when you look at that, um, somebody who looks at me and say, ooh, I want him as a boyfriend. Ooh, I want to be connected to him, right? You don't know what you're asking for until you have to walk that walk, until you have to talk what you walk and walk what you talk. When you, when you understand those things, when you understand who you are, it also allows you to make wise decisions with other people because you don't submit yourself to anything. You don't commit yourself to anything. You don't connect yourself to anything. Why? Because you may look good. You may look sweet. You may look kind. But because I know who I am and I know my purpose and you're still trying to find your purpose, you're still trying to understand what life is about. You're still trying to understand what God has called you to be. So you know what, boo-boo? We could be friends. We could be friends. But at the end of the day, I must be about my father's business. At the end of the day, I must do what God has called me to do. Otherwise, I'm unhappy. And if I'm unhappy and you're connected with me, guess what? I'm going to make you unhappy. Right? And so this is important for us to understand who we are and not be uh, uh, an empty vessel. Not be a vessel that's empty and waiting for somebody to pour into me, waiting for somebody to show me love. Oh, because I need love in my life. My God, if you don't know how to love yourself, then nobody else can love you. If you don't know how to love and, and enjoy your moments, if you don't know how to find peace all by yourself, how are you going to find peace with somebody else who's, whose personality is different than yours? Oh yeah, when people when people like you, when you're brand new, when people are romantic with you, when when people think that you're fine and you're sexy and you're cute, oh yeah, oh they'll say anything. They'll be like, they'll be half tired, half tired. Like no, nah, boo, I'm still awake. I'm just on the phone listening to you. Oh baby, you sound so good. And they sitting there yawning and they sitting there going, man, I wish I was in bed. Oh my God, I wish I was in bed. But to you, you don't hear that. All you hear is, hey, sweetie, hey, baby, right? But then guess what? Once you get married, uh huh. try to hang out with them then. Try to say, that this is why so many people, so many people that I've counseled, right? Later on said, pastor, they say the same thing. Pastor, we don't do the things that we used to do. One of the things I thank God for my father for, my father, my earthly father, he, he was, he wasn't always the easiest man to deal with, but, but he was straight, he was a straight shooter. And one of the things he said to me as a child, he said to me, son, don't ever do anything with a woman that you're not willing to do for the rest of your life. He said, don't do things just because she wants you to do it. Do it because you really believe that that's important. 
Do it because from the heart, you really want to do this, right? And, and he said, because too many men, when they're dating and they want to get in, and, and, and not just the men, ladies, you too. Y'all sit there and, and he can call you at 1230 at night and say, babe, I didn't get a chance to eat. And you'd be like, okay, I'm going to rustle up something. You can come by and pick up some food, right? But then once you get married and he said, can you give me a glass of water? You're like, I'm in the bed, sleep, get it yourself, right? We forget that when we start to live our lives based upon us having that, as I spoke the other day, that manipulated love, that love that manipulates, that love that tries to get my way, right? When we live a life based upon that, because deep down inside, we're empty. We're empty vessels. And the Bible says, with an unclean spirit, let's say you're in a bad relationship or in a bad situation, right? Or you're in your life, you've gone through some things, right? And then you break free of that, right? Guess what? That unclean spirit is now chased out of you. That unclean spirit in that relationship is now chased out. And now you go about your journey. But that unclean spirit says, I used to have you. That unclean spirit says, you used to belong to me. And that unclean spirit comes back to hunt you down. You got men and women who are watching pornography. You watching pornography when you are um, a, a single and then you get married because somebody told you um, that the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. And so you get married and then you got the cow, you got everything, you got the milk, you got everything else. But here you go sneaking in the basement or in the attic or in your office watching porno. Here you are, ladies, going to these plays. And when they got the young strapping men with the ripped abs and the cut up chest and he rip off his shirt, you go, Ooh. you know, you see, save sisters in there just lusting after a man's body. Why? Because you never fixed that mess that was going on inside of you. You never fixed that mess that was happening deep down within your heart, but you're an empty vessel. And when you're empty inside and you're not full of the Holy Spirit, you're not full of his presence, then you look for people to pacify you. You look for people to encourage you. You look for people to tell you that you are something special. You look for people to do that. And then when you do that, it makes you a mark for predators. It makes you a mark for those who are ignorant. And yeah, you can find those who are simple minded and they'll boost your ego and boost your ego. And you'll start thinking, oh, it's love. But after a while, that person that's been boosting your ego for the last 20 years is now sick and tired of boosting your ego because guess what? They're boosting your ego and you ain't doing nothing for them because all you're doing is accepting all the glory. It's a danger when your vessel is empty. It is a dangerous thing to have an empty vessel because the demons will come in. Let's look at Luke chapter 11. Thank you, Lord. And like I said, I'm not going to be before you too long this night um, because I want to share this with you and I want really go down in prayer. Um, Luke 11. And um, when you get to Luke 11, look at verses 24 to 26. The same thing we just read in Matthew chapter 12. But he says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finding none. He says, that unclean spirit says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. And then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Right. Here's a question I have. What happened to the sweet you? What happened to the innocent you? What happened? I mean, these are questions we need to ask ourselves when there are certain things that's changing and we look in the mirror and we see certain things and maybe maybe you can see it through your age or maybe you can see it through your skin complexion or maybe you can see it in your eyes that you're a little bit tired. You're a little bit tired of the mess and you're hoping for a day of rest. David said these words. He says, 
Oh, that I had wings of a dove, that I may fly into a far distant land in the wilderness and be at rest. When you look in Noah's day, Noah released a dove from the ark and the dove kept coming back to the ark. Why? Because the Bible says the dove could not find rest for the soles of her feet. So she kept flying back to the ark. She kept flying back what she, um, what she understood, glory to his name. She kept flying back to what she understood. And so therefore, um, she could not find rest for her feet. But guess what? When she found that olive branch, the olive represents the Holy Spirit. When she found the Holy Spirit, she found rest for the soles of her feet. So guess what? She didn't need the ark. She didn't need the little comfort zone. She didn't need the, the things uh, of the ark for safety. But guess what? She was able to find rest on her own. I'm here to tell you, have you found or ask you tonight, have you found rest on your own? Have you found rest in your spirit, in the depths of your heart? Because there's no way you're going to love someone else if you don't love yourself. There's no way you're going to find peace in someone else if you don't find peace in yourself. Now, mind you, it's not, this is, doesn't exclude you from getting married or exclude you for having relationship. No, it's just that you need to not put the cart before the horse. You need to find rest. Jesus says, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly and humble of heart. Come and you shall find rest for your souls. It'll make a better marriage. It'll make a better, better bedrooms and better lovemaking if you're at peace. If, if you're not so angry, if you're not so frustrated, if you're not so aggravated, if you're not so anxious, amen, if you're not so insecure, it'll make your relationship better. It'll make your businesses better. It'll make your job better. It'll make your schooling better. It'll make your church better. But the problem is too many of us, we haven't allowed the Holy Spirit that free reign to come in, Lord, and do what you want to do. Come in, Lord, and do what you want to do in my heart, in my soul, in my mind. You know, we don't want to do that. We want we want to uh, micromanage the Holy Spirit. We want to micromanage him and, and, and let him know what we want him to work on and what we don't want him to work on. No, the Holy Spirit knows what he needs to work on and he knows what needs to go in priority. He knows what needs to happen in your life. And sometimes what he'll start at, he'll start at the stuff that you love the most. He'll start right there. He ain't going to start the easy stuff. He's going to start the stuff that you don't want to touch. You know, I remember when I went through divorce, um, separation and divorce, man, my heart was broken and the Holy Spirit had to really face me and, and bring it to my face. And, you know, I was looking for people to to support me. I was looking for people to be on my side. And the Holy Spirit made sure that nobody was really on my side. The Holy Spirit made sure that folks would Folks who said they were my friends, folks who said that they were close to me, these same people started questioning. They started doubting certain things and, and, and asking questions. Well, why did they do that? If, 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 you, if, they said, if they did what you said they did, why did they say this? And why did it? And it was just the Lord was telling me, you know what? I'm causing them not to hear you because you need to face where you came from. You need to face what you've been through. You need to face it and you need to come to grips with it that Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit was right there in the midst of that pain. I know you don't want to admit it. I know you think the Holy Spirit is only there in your blessings, but guess what? He is there in the darkest of nights. He is there in the worst of situations. God is there in every circumstance. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was dark, was, was filled with darkness, it was void and without form. 
and darkness was upon the face of the deep. But guess who was there? The Holy Spirit. He was right there hovering across over the waters, watching everything that have, have been destroyed and everything that have been defiled and distorted. Don't you know that when you went through that pain, the Holy Spirit was hovering right over you? And he was asking you, call on me, call on me. But let's be honest, many of us didn't. We were just asking the Lord, Lord, move me out of this situation. Lord, get me out of this situation. Lord, get me out of this mess. Lord, fix my problems. Lord, my back is against the wall. Help me through this situation. That's all we were asking the Holy Spirit. We wasn't asking him, Lord, take control. We wasn't asking him to take control. No, we wanted to be in control. We wanted, it almost reminds me of when you drive somebody somewhere who's normally used to driving and they keep, they're looking at the rearview mirror. If you put on a signal, they're looking to see if a car is coming. Uh, uh, if you go through fast, they, they, whoa, 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 slow down. You know, they, they're telling you slow down. They're telling you turn here, turn there. You ain't behind the wheel. Sit back and be a passenger. And when it comes to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will not be a passenger in your car. Either you're going to let him drive or he's going to sit there and watch you get lost. He's going to sit there and watch you stumble, trip and fall over yourself because you won't give him the authority over your life. Turn with me to Malachi, the book of Malachi. Thank you, Lord. Malachi chapter one. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. And when you get to Malachi chapter one, I want you to look at verse six. Malachi chapter one, verse six. It says, a son honors his father and a servant his master. He says, if then I am the father, where is my honor? If I am a master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts to you priest who despise my name. Yet you say, in what way have we despised your name? In other words, God is saying that if you say he's your Lord, why doesn't he have control of you? Why aren't you following him every step of the way? And, and why are you still, after all these years, still saying, okay, I choose to do this. Now, God, I want you to bless it. Lord, I choose to go here. Now, God, I want you to get me there safely. God, I choose to go on vacation, but I want you to get me there safely and let me have a good time. If he's Lord of your life, then you got to let him be Lord. You got to let him have his way. You got to let him take full control because then God will make sure that you're not an empty vessel. He's going to make sure that you are filled with his presence. And that every area of your life that is jacked up, every area of your life that you done covered under mountains of foundation and makeup or, or your fine suits or your wallet or your credit or your portfolio or your education or your employment history or your job, your position or your ministry. All this stuff you done hid under that stuff. You think God don't see it? He sees it. He sees it when, when you're a preacher and somebody else come to preach and you in your mind out preaching them and, and saying what they should have done and what they should not have done. He sees the envy. He sees when you're beckoning for attention, when you love for people to say, bless her, bless her, Lord, bless her. You know, he sees when you're doing that. And that stuff comes from a hurtful place. It comes from a dark place. And so tonight, I want to encourage you. Submit all of you to the Lord. Submit all of you to the Lord. Before you go any further, Lord, take all of me. God, help me to surrender all to you. Help me, Lord God, to leave no stone unturned, but to surrender it all 
Job said, because when you hide stuff, there's a fear about it. And Job said these words, the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. And so you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful not to be an empty vessel. Empty meaning to not have anything real of substance inside of you. To be sort of a facade. Something light, like light bread, 2% milk. No, you need to be whole. God wants you to be whole. God doesn't want you to be broken. He doesn't want you to be empty. He doesn't want you to be insecure or feeling some kind of way. No, God wants you to be whole. And you, my friends, can be whole. You can be whole. Right where you are, it doesn't matter what you've gone through. It doesn't matter what pains you've, you've dealt with. It doesn't matter what you've gone through and, and how much stuff you're holding that you're responsible for and, and how much stuff you have on your plate and how, much, how many weights you have on your shoulder. None of those things matter. It matters, do you surrender all? Do you surrender to him those dark places, those places where you ain't got time to think about the pain? Why? Because you got you to get the kids together. You got to go to work. You got to get the house together. You got to get food on the table. You got to pay bills. You got to um, uh, worry about this, worry about that, get your hair done. You got to buy clothes. You got to do this. You got to go dry cleaners. You got to wash your clothes. You got to clean the car. You got to pay your car note. You got to pay your mortgage, your lease. You got to do this. You got to go to church. You got your position in church. And, and listen, you don't have time to think. This is why I oftentimes tell people, that the more you get settled in God, the more you start to stand still so that God can speak to you. The more you enjoy those moments alone where God can speak to you and show you things that you have yet to see. Show you things that you didn't know, that you didn't realize. Show you things about yourself that you thought was long gone, but it's still right there. The Holy Spirit will do that to you, but you got to allow him to have full control. Full control over you. Full control over your choices. Full control over where you go, what you do. That means if you give him control, nobody else has it. Nobody else has that control, but it will be him leading you. David said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. He says, how can a young man be cleansed? By taking heed to thy word with my whole heart have I sought you. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. For thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I'm here to tell you, people of God, that when you surrender all, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. No longer are you anxious for things because you know that everything comes in its time. You're not, you're not uh, uh, rushing things. You're not pushing things ahead. Why? Because Lord, the, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, whatever I need, he gives it unto me. So why should I run and rush for anything? See, you must find wholeness in him. You cannot live this life any further, making it look good on the outside when the inside is messed up. So you need to surrender. You need to say, Lord, I give it to you. It's not my fight anymore. It's not my battle anymore. But God, it is your battle. Help me to submit and to not move. Help me to stand still, God. Help me, Lord God, to trust you even when I can't see. This is the work of every believer. And so I want to stop right there. I know it's been a short meeting tonight, but I'm going to stop right there because I feel that this is a Holy Ghost moment. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. There are areas of your life right now 
that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about. He's speaking to you in a manner that tells you that you can't fix it. You must give it over to him. You must face that situation. You must face it with all of your heart and know this, that when you face it with all of your heart, you are not facing it alone, but God is with you. He's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. So let us pray that we would surrender all to our Father. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this time that you've given me with your people. Though it is short, Lord God, I believe that your Holy Spirit has spoken to all of our hearts. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would reveal your wisdom, your knowledge, and your truth unto us. And that, Father, you would cause all of us to submit ourselves holistically towards you. That, Father, you would give us the will to do of your good pleasure and that you would have your way in our lives. God, be exalted in us and let your name be praised. We thank you, Lord God, for you are king and master over everything. So, Father, have your way in our life. Heal our brokenness. Heal our soul. Don't, our souls. Don't let us run from you any further. But I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that we will surrender all unto your presence. We thank you. We glorify you. And we magnify your holy name. For you are king above all kings and Lord above all lords. So have your way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for spending this hour, a little less than an hour with me. Thank you. You guys are such a blessing. I love you all with the love of Jesus. Have a blessed and marvelous evening. Thank you, everyone, for your support and your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. You guys are such a blessing. Have a blessed and marvelous evening. Be safe. Whatever you do, do all for the glory of the Lord. Don't, don't leave him. Don't, don't turn from him. Right? Do all for the glory. Thank you, Angela, for posting the cash um, um, app and also the PayPal information. If you're interested in giving, you can do that. Um, any amount is, is sufficient. God bless you. I love you all with the love of Jesus. Have a blessed and marvelous evening in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you.